And good afternoon and welcome. Please let me know, as always, if you can hear me and see me in the chat. And yeah, happy Monday, everybody. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be doing a live solo playthrough of Keeper. Now, I've just noticed that the uh, the light is a bit bright there, but if it's okay for you, uh, then, then let me know. It does look a little bit too bright to me. <laughs> it was okay earlier on, and I don't know what's happened. I think the sun's come around a little bit. Um, let me just drop it down a little bit. Oh, no, a bit too much. There you go. That's probably a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. All right, a little bit less bright. So, yeah, it looks and sounds good. Um, solo rules. So, we're going to be doing Keeper solo today. The solo rules for Keeper uh, have been released as part of the expansion, which is on Kickstarter right now, Keeper at Sea. So Keeper at Sea contains three games. You've got the shallow water version of the game, you've got the deep water version of the game, and then you've got the solo game. Now, the solo game can be played with either the base game of Keeper, which is what I'm going to be doing today. You can also play it with the shallow water version. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going... I'm not using the shallow water version today, but I, I could have done. We are all set up and I'm going to be teaching you the rules as we go along. Now, I will say that although I've spent a bit of time preparing for this, the chance of me making a rules mistake is approximately 152% because the AI in this game is actually very clever. Um, and there's a lot of things going on. Thankfully, the designer is in the chat, Richard Breeze is here, uh, and Paul Kelly's in the chat, who keeps me honest as well, and um, pointing me out. Uh, it, oh, it still says Keeper at Sea Solo. Yes, it does. Okay, I'll just change that. Thank you very much, because I was going to do Keeper at Sea Solo, uh, and then I changed it to just Keeper Solo. There we go. We're on, Keeper Solo. Right, okay, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to show you the Ketoma board to start with. So this is the AI's board. And what we have here is we have the scoring markers, which start off on zero. We have uh, Ketoma's Keeper, which is here. We have nine key pulls because it's a two-player game. Uh, so in a two-player game, you ha normally you have, you have two white key pulls each, and then one of each other colour. In a two-player game, each player gets an extra one. Um, <clears throat> it's chosen at random from a selection of uh, green, orange, brown and grey, I think. And then what happens is you put these in a specific order. So the white ones go at the front. This is the front of the queue. Then these go randomly. And then the colour that it's got a duplicate one of, that goes at the back. Okay. Here we have all of the 12 building tiles that a player would normally start with. Uh, these just go here in any order. It doesn't matter. Uh, they just go piled there. Uh, Ketoma starts with one of each raw material. So we have logs, rocks, and clay. They start with one wheat. They start with one of each finished good, which is stone, wood, and bricks. Then we have the eight different animal meeples, which you can't really see from the overhead camera how cute these are, but they're all very cute. These go in a random order. So this is Ketoma's priority scale of animals. So it really wants pigs first. It doesn't really want cows at the moment. Okay, that's what that is. We have a similar one here. Uh, now you start off, I think, with those there, but the wheat goes on the second space. Let me just check that. Yeah, wheat goes on the second space, uh, and then the other ones go on spaces one, three, and four. We have the four gems here. They were randomly put on there, so that's all of that. Then we have the action spaces board. Now this is the bit that's really clever. Uh, what we have is we have three columns for actions, we have an action tracker at the top of each one, and down here we have temporary action trackers. Uh, doesn't matter the colours of these really, they're just, they're just counters to mark certain spaces. We'll come on to that later on. My board is as normal. I have a starting fair for each of the three seasons, and we'll have a look at this. Don't show it to the other player. But we need to get a cow and some logs by the end of spring in order to get two points. The extra starting meeple that I've got at the start of the game is green, and we're ready to go. So I'm not going to explain all of the rules up front, we're going to jump, jump in, we're going to start playing, and we'll see how we get on. So we're basically going to be taking alternative turns. Uh, I, I start, and whenever I take a turn and do something, Ketoma might join me or not, and you'll see that happening right now. So based on what my fair is, I think my first move is I'm going to place my farmer, which is the green meeple, and I'm going to put it on this space here. Now these boards are as normal, uh, both in spring 
one of them with the one player icon on, uh, one of them with the two player icon on. So I, I'm going to go there. And I'm going to go there, and I've decided that I'm going to collect myself some cows. So what happens now is Ketoma decides whether to join me or not. And what we do is we look at their board. And we look at these action tracker spaces here. Okay. And again, if that is a bit too bright for you, let me know and I can turn it down. I've turned another light on since this afternoon's, <laughs> this afternoon's test. So what we're doing is we're looking for the type of space that I've gone on. It's a space that collects animals and you will see that there are animal icons on certain spaces here. So first of all, you look at whether there is an animal icon on any of the spaces with the action tracker. There isn't. OK, if there was, it would definitely want to join me. However, there is an animal here, which is one space away. OK, so if it's one space away, the chance of it joining me is four in six. In other words, I'm going to roll the dice and we're going to use the special gaming rules dice for today. And it will join me if I roll a three, four, five or a six. Now, if it was two spaces away, it would be lower chance. And if it was three spaces away, it would be lower chance. You might think, how am I going to remember that? Well, on the back of the box and in the rule book, there is a handy dandy reference sheet. So this is this is the back of the box here. But as I say, this is also in the rule book. And the Ketoma joiner conditions is if there is an action tracker on the space, then it will join. The base chance of it joining is a one to six. It's one space away. So the base chance of it joining is a three to six. Now, that can be modified for a couple of reasons. First of all, if it can join me, uh, if it has a green meeple available, uh, sorry, a keeple, a green keeple available, then that doesn't change the base chance. If it didn't have a green keeple, the chance of it joining me would be one less. So it would have to roll a four to six to join me rather than a three to six. Also, and this won't make any sense if you don't know how to play keeper. In fact, if you don't know how to play keeper, a lot of this isn't going to make much sense. But at some point during this season, both of us are going to claim one of these boards. We're going to get one board each. And if I had already claimed this board or Ketoma had already claimed the other board, then the chance of it joining me on this board would again be reduced. Now, in this situation, we have none of that. No boards have been claimed. Ketoma does have a green keeple, so the chance of it joining me is three to six. So we're going to roll the dice to see if it's going to join me. Okay, right, off we go. It's a four, so it, it is going to join me. Now we look at what it's going to join me with, and it's going to join me with the green keeple from here. So that goes on there. And then what happens is, as per the normal rules, uh, you get one action for placing the keeple, another one because there's a colour match, and another one because there's a joiner. So both players will get three actions, which in that case is to collect a cow. Now, my cows go here. They need somewhere to live. Uh, Ketoma doesn't bother with animal restrictions. Uh, the, the, the cows actually just go on their board here like that. Uh, they don't need anywhere specific to house them. OK. So that is my first turn done. I went there with the farmer. Ketoma decided to join me and we both got three cows. Right. Now we go to Ketoma's turn. Now, again, if you know the game of Keeper, you will know that at some point during the season, you will claim one of the boards. Now, when you claim a board is tactically very, very important. You could claim a board right at the start. You could claim a board in the middle. You could wait till the very end. But if you wait to the end, the chances are you might not get a board that you particularly want. This is represented in the game by, and I'm going to show it on screen now. It's, uh, no, it's not that. It's a different flowchart. Right. OK, hang on. I need to add another image. And it's a flowchart that is included in the game. And let me just add it in here. It is had it up on screen earlier on and then I replaced it with a different one. It's that one. Right, here we go. So this is a flowchart which might look complicated, but it's actually very good and really useful. So basically, Ketoma's action to decide what it's going to do, we first of all look at the top box and it's does Ketoma have any keeples or not? Yes, Ketoma does have lots of keeples. Next, does it still have its keeper? Yes, it does have its keeper. Do I still have my keeper? Yes, I do have my keeper. 
So we do what's called a CBV, right? CBV is the country board value. Basically, what this is saying is if neither player has claimed a board yet, then Kitoma might decide to claim a board, okay? Which is exactly how it is in, the, in, in a normal two-player game. At this point in time, this player might decide to claim a board. But it's not going to happen right now because the country board value of a board is minus four and then you add one for every keeple on it or you add two for every white keeple. So right now the country board value of this board is minus four and the country board value of this board is minus two. And what we're doing is we roll the dice and we've got to roll that number or lower. Uh, sorry, that number or... Yeah, that, that number or lower. So we're not, we're not going to do that. So basically it's not going to claim a board. So if we go back to the flowchart, we will see if it's not going to claim a board, it chooses an action, okay? And this is where we can look at the back of the box. Uh, I think it is to determine which action it's going to do. Um, what we do is we look at its board here and we roll the dice. Oh, hang on a minute. There is something I forgot. Because it followed me, we put a temporary action marker there because it wanted to do that, but it has now done that. So we mark it with a cube. Monica's in the chat. Hi, Monica. Thank you for joining him. Uh, so yeah, so now it's its go. It's not going to claim a board. So we roll a d6 to decide what it's going to do. And it's a three. So it's going to do the action from that column. Now the action from that column is build. Okay. Ignore the temporary action marker for now. We're just doing the build action, which is right at the top. That's what it's going to do. So what we look at, let's get rid of that image off screen. We look at the build action and I do have the rule book open on screen next to me. So I am going to occasionally be looking off to the side to look at the rule book. But we look at the build action and we look at the different spaces that it can build. So if we look at these boards here, uh, this is a build action space. This is a build action space. This is a discount build action space, and this is a discount build action space. So there are four possible locations where it could build right now. And what we do when it builds, and again, this is all covered in the rule book, um, but what we do is we look at how many resources it's got for building. <clears throat> and potentially, these are all possible resources that it can use for building. So does it have four or more? Yes, it does. It will choose one of the normal uh, action spaces, one of the normal fields for building. So it's either going to choose that one or it's going to choose that one. Now there is a process that we follow to decide um, which of those fields it's going to use and I'm just going to look that here. Uh, if there is a field containing a single coloured keeple, uh, then it will join. There isn't one. Um, so if you've not already claimed a board, if you have already claimed a board but Ketoma has not, then it will choose the one on the other board. Uh, otherwise it chooses the one with the lesser value. So basically, neither player has claimed a board yet, so it's going to choose this board because this has got the lesser value. Uh, and it's going to choose that space there because it has four resources. It does have an orange keeple, so it's going to move the orange keeple here. And now I can decide whether I want to join or not. And I think I'm going to. I think I want to join because of the things that I've got. Do I want to join? Actually, I might not want to. Because right now, I don't have any raw materials. I only have the finished goods. So I... Oh. See, this is the other thing about the board game. And you're, you're going to find this if you know how to play the board game, even without the solo rules. Is deciding whether to join or not is quite often an obvious decision and sometimes not an obvious decision. I don't think I'm going to join because I don't really have enough raw materials right now to make this work. No, so I, I'm not going to join. So what we do is we just carry out two build actions for Ketoma. Okay. Now, whenever it carries out a build action, these are its buildings and we don't actually pay the cost of the building whatsoever. We just move the tile onto the built stack and that costs two resources from here. If this is empty, we use the wheat. If this is empty, we use the finished good. I'm, po I'm pointing and you can't see my finger. So these, then this, then this. So basically what it does is it spends these two and then that one and that one because uh, it's got two build actions and it builds the top two tiles onto there like that. Okay. Now I'm keeping an eye on the chat because uh, Mr. Breeze, the designer, uh, is in the chat. 
Uh, David Turtsey, who's the designer of the solar mode, was going to try and join us today, but I think he might be driving. Uh, don't drive and watch YouTube videos is my, my advice for today. Right, then, because it took this action, we move the action tracker down to the next space, but the next space has one of these in it. So it's already done that. And what happens is the marker moves to the next space and that is now done. And these are, this is how the markers move down over the course of the game. And yes, it's key pull instead of me pull. And it's K-E-Y-P-L-E, uh, -E, key pull. Right, okay, so back to my go. What am I going to do? Well, I need some raw materials. So I think I'm going to go. Yeah. OK, I think I'm going to place my woodcutter. And I'm going to place it here. OK, so now again, we're going to decide if Ketoma is going to join us or not. So let's have a look at the board. I am collecting raw materials. So is one of these spaces with an action tracker with raw materials? Yes, it is. So its base chance of joining me is six in six. I went on there with a brown keepal. Does it have a brown keepal? Yes, it does. So that doesn't modify the base chance. Have I claimed this board or has it claimed the other board? No. So the base chance is six in six. So we don't actually need to roll. Okay, it's definitely joining me. It's going to join me with a brown keeple. It's going to go on there and we both get three logs and then this marker moves down to there. Okay, so logs are represented by the brown cubes. There's the rest of the logs. Two, three. Okay. Now, something else does happen. Uh, in fact, it should have happened when it got the cows. Yeah, so something should have happened when it got the cows. The chat didn't spot that. Um, but also, something should now happen when it gets the, gets the wood. So I'm just going to read what would have happened uh, when it gets the wood. And uh, I actually don't think it matters. Let me just double check this. Yeah. Right, so remember what I said at the start about these priority spaces. This is the priority in which it wants to collect finished goods and raw materials. The raw materials is actually right to left, as you can see by the cube there with the arrow. So it really wanted to collect wood, okay? Now that it's got the wood, what it does is it actually shuffles this to there, okay? And now its priority is to convert that wood, uh, sorry, those logs into wood, okay? Convert the logs into, into wood. Now, if we look at the animal track, we actually didn't miss it earlier. Well, I did miss it, but it didn't actually matter. So cows were the least of its priorities. But so if, if it was its turn, it would not want to collect cows. But because it joined me in collecting cows, it then collected cows. So wherever the cow marker was on here, it would move to the end. So that's it. I forgot to do it, but actually it didn't actually make any difference because the cows were already at the end. Right. OK, so that was it's go. My go. My go. That was my go. I was collecting logs from the forest and that's me done. And we move the marker down. So it's it's go. Yeah. Okay, right. Off we go. It's a two. So it's using the first column. I need to roll this somewhere that it doesn't. I might roll it off camera. <laughs> I have a dice rolling tray. <clears throat> uh, so it's doing this action and it's taking tiles from here. That's what that action is. The square means it's going to take tiles from here. These are eight spring tiles. And one of the differences in the solo game is instead of just dealing eight tiles out in a row, you have to put them into two rows. Two rows of four columns each. And you'll see why in a minute. So which action can it do to take those tiles? It's that one or that one. OK. Uh, now, I did skip the rolling at the start of the turn to see if it would claim a board because this board only has a value of zero. So it wasn't still applicable, which is why I skipped it. Um, so is it going to go there? Is it going to go there? We're not sure. It's going to go. Neither player has claimed any board, so it's going to go here because this is the board with the lesser value. OK, so 
Uh, there is no colored border on the space, which means it just uses the meeple at the back of the queue. So it's using the gray one and it's going there. Now, do I want to join? Um, if I join, it will have to be with a gray people or white. And the problem is if I don't join, it's going to run out of keeples very early. And that's a good thing. Sort of. It's a good and bad thing. Um, I think I do want to join. Yeah, I'm going to join. And I'm going to join with a grey keeple. So that's going to go on there. Right. So what happens is we now get to take two tiles from here. Um, because it's the first player, it's going to take the first tile. Then I'm going to get two. Then it's going to get the last one. And what we do is we roll the dice to see uh, where it's going to choose. So this is, we first roll the dice to see which row it takes from. One, two, three, it's this row. Four, five, or six, it's this row. Then we roll for the column with this being one, two, three, and four to six. So it will take the ones here uh, more than 50% of the time. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll two dice. The gaming rules one is for the row, the other one's for the column. So the first one is six and five. So that's six and five is going to take the windmill. So what you do is you simply take the tile and you put it on the top there. It's another building for it to build. Okay, so me, I get to take two of these. Now there was a message in the chat earlier on that I should take the Cluck Cluck Chicken House, uh, which I, I kind of want to just for the name. So I think I will. I'm going to take the Cluck Cluck Chicken House. So that goes here. And I'm also going to take the building plot. So that goes here. Okay, and now we roll again to see which other tile it's going to pick. Uh, and it's four and six. So it actually takes that one because that's the only other one there. Okay, so that's the end of the tile taking. And now we get new tiles. Now this is the bag of spring tiles. Giovanni says, how to obtain a gaming rules dice? Yes. Well, I've got, I've got some gaming rules dice. I was giving them away to uh, patron supporters at Essen. Not last year, but the year before. Um, so yeah, if you are a Gaming Rules patron supporter uh, and you happen to see me at a convention, then I will happily pass one on. Elle's here as well. Hi Elle, thank you very much for joining in. Cows and sheep, that's what it's all about. Okay, right, we've done that. That is the end of that action and that was... The Thomas go... It did the action, which means that marker moved to there. So my go, let's have a look at the situation. I've got six keepers left. It's only got five. Do I want to claim a board at this point? I don't think I do, but I need to be very careful because um, I think Ketoma might be claiming a board once we get some more keepers on the board. I do want to build the cow shed. Definitely need to build the cow shed. But I also want to build the building plot. And I can do that. But if I go there, I think it might join me. Hmm. Do I want it to join me if I go there? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm going to build. I'm going to go into the build space here. So again, we look at, we look at its board. Uh, yes, so next year in Essen, we will meet up and I'll give you a gaming rules dice. Um, so, what's it going to do? Build. Does it want to build? Yes, it does want to build. It really wants to build here. So the default chance is six in six. Let's look at the modifiers. Has anybody claimed a board? No, so that doesn't change it. Does it have an orange meeple? Yes, so that hasn't changed it. So it's six in six. So we don't need to roll. So we're just going to put that. Oh, no, we don't move them up. We move that down to there. It's going to join me. That goes on there. We both get to do three builds. Okay, so I'm going to do my build first. I am going to build the building plot, which is going to go here. That costs me some bricks. I'm going to build the cow shed with some logs. I'm going to put the cow shed here with the cows in it. And do we build the cluck cluck chicken house ready for summer? Or should I be looking at building something else? I think I might build the sheep shelter because I know that I need a sheep in summer. So I'm going to build the sheep shelter with some more logs and I'm going to put it there. Okay, 
So that's my three builds. So now we look at Ketoma, uh, and Ketoma has the resources to do three builds. It does one, two, three, and we just move three more buildings like so. So it built, it's built a ton of buildings already. Um, right, uh, and that's, that's it. Right, okay, so now it's its turn. Now let's have a look at this again, because I showed you this earlier on, and I'm going to show it you now. This is what you need to check at the start of every one of Ketoma's turns. Does it have any key pulls? Yes. Does it have its keeper? Yes. Do I still have my keeper? Yes. So we roll. This value, the board of this value is minus one, but the value of this board is now two. One per meeple, minus four. It's always minus four. So the value, the, uh, the country board value here is two. So what we need to do is we need to roll the dice, and if we get a one or a two, Ketoma is going to claim this board. And we've rolled a two. So there you go. So it is going to do it. Now that's going to change the whole dynamics of the rest of this round. Okay. But that's it. That's all it does as its action. It's claimed the board. Time for a cup of tea. Right, my go. So yeah, that, that has changed things because I was hoping to claim this board myself, which is why I was putting things on it. Uh, now that I'm not going to get that board, I'm tempted to now play on this board. And what I want to do is I want to try and sneakily convince Ketoma to come and join me. And I think we can do that. But then again, it's going to run out of people soon. Is this going to work? Oh, I could have got chickens. I could have absolutely have got chickens from the White Wind ship. Ah, right. Now, I need to look at what it's going to do as well. It wants to do a boat action. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to do a boat action. I'm going to try and sneak it out. And I am going to take... I'm going to use my fisherman keeple. And... Do we just want to go on the sea breeze now? No, because I need some... Ah, I might go on the Sea Bastion. Yeah, I'm going to go on the Sea Bastion. So we're going to take that and I'm going to go on. Right, is it going to join me? So we look at its board and we can see here that the action tracker is on a boat symbol. That means there is a default six in six chance that it's going to join me. Okay. However, it has already claimed this board. What that means is it knows I'm going to claim this board so that chance is reduced by one. So instead of it being six in six, it's just five in six. So on a, on a two to six, it joins me. Six, it joins me, and it joins me with a blue keeple, and it goes on there. Okay, so I've got three actions. I am going to take um, two sheep and a clay. That's what I'm going to take. Now, what Ketoma does is Ketoma tries to sell as much as possible. Now, Ketoma doesn't have any sheep or clay, so it can't do any of that. So what it does is instead, it will use its three actions to take stuff. And I believe it gets one sheep and two clay. I'm just going to double check that. Boating actions. Um... If Ketoma sold nothing, Ketoma will receive resources in equal amounts with more of the resource depicted on the bottom of the tile. Yes, okay, so Ketoma got two clay and one sheep, and that's the end of that action. Okay, so now we don't need to go back to the flowchart now because it has, it has already placed its keeper, so it is now just placing uh, keepers. Oh, I forgot to move this down. There you go. So let's have a roll to see what it's going to do. It's a one. So it's going to go to the home area. Now the home area for a player means placing their keeple uh, on, on an area of the board and doing an action on a building. For Ketoma, it's, it's a lot easier. All you do is you, there's no colour match, so you take the keeple at the far right here, you put it on there, and we get one raw material and one finished good of the same type as indicated by the rightmost 
non-wheat resource priority marker and then move it to the leftmost. So it gets a clay and it gets um, some bricks and then that marker moves to the end. Okay. Uh, does that move the chicken priority? When you say chicken priority mark, do you mean the sheep priority? I don't think it does, but let me just check. It doesn't, so, oh, no, it does. Move any animal type sold in the order that they are sold to the rightmost animal priority space. So if, if it was to sell an animal, it would have moved to the right. If it gains an animal, I don't think it does. Oh, no, it does. Uh, or does it? Oh, hang on. I'll ask Richard. Yeah, he got a sheep. So I'm, I'm going to check unless Richard tells us in the chat, does the sheep move to the end of the road? Because it did gain a sheep. Uh, Itoma will select the boat where it can sell the most. So if it was selecting a sheep, it would select, sorry, if it was selecting a boat, it would sell the boat that it can sell the most of. And if multiple boats are tied, then out of the tied boats, it chooses the one carrying the animal furthest to the left on the animal priority spaces. But no, according to the rules, it only moves to the right if it sells an animal, which it didn't. Too excited about the chickens. Yes, me, me too. Um, so I think that's right. And again, Richard will confirm in the chat if we got that right and the sheep doesn't move. Okay, so it's done that, it's done that, it got one of them, it got one of them. That marker moves down to there. It's my go. Now, I'm not in any rush to claim this board. This is my board. I am going to get this at some point, so you're not in any rush. But this is where in a four-player game, or even a three-player game, you really, the, the tactical decision about when you place your keeper is, uh, your keeper is very important. And I still have my white keepers left. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, I should have, uh, I should have gone and got the animal first. I can get some wheat. Let's try and tease out those white keepers. I'm going to go here because wheat is like a wild card, sort of. Um, so I'm going to go there. I'm going to send my farmer to the wheat field and collect some wheat. So um, we look at the ketoma board. Now wheat counts as on this board as a raw material. So we have here, we have, it wants to collect raw materials. So it's a six in six chance. However, that is modified by minus one because it doesn't have a green keeper. It would have to place a white one. So it goes down from six in six to five in six. Also, this is going to be my board. So it goes down to a four in six. So we roll the dice and on a three to six, it's going to join me with a white keeper, which is brilliant for me. Oh, it's not going to join me. Right. Okay. Rats. Okay. Uh, Richard says boars move any animal type sold in the order that they are sold to the... Yeah. Yeah. So my question is, it didn't sell. My question is, does it move because it got one from the boat? And I think the answer is no. So it's not going to join me. So I just get two wheat. And that's my action over. Right. Now it is Ketoma. Ah, boats, not bulls. Yes. <laughs> so we did it right then, is, is, is all I'm asking. Did we do it right? I think we did. Okay, Ketoma is a four. So it's going to upgrade. Now, this is not something that happened in my test game this afternoon. So I'm just going to have to read the rules on upgrading. So we first of all, we look at, there is an upgrade space here. There is also an upgrade space nowhere else. Nope, there's only one upgrade space available and it's there. A shame that that's not my board. Okay, so um, yeah, it's basically, I, I think it's going to place a white keeper on that space. Um, Yeah, I think that's what it does. If, if there was two spaces, if there was a space on each board, it would choose the board that it could go to. So I think this is right. I think it's going to place a white keeper on here. Now, I could join that, but if I did, I'd have to use my own white keeper. Cheeples, yes, or chickles. <laughs> yeah, chicken meeples. Um, sounds tasty. Right, so it's gone on there and it's doing the upgrade action. So yeah, I need to just read how the upgrade action works. Um, for each upgrade action, which is two, one because it's the space and one for a colour match, 
Uh, Ketoma spends one wheat or finished goods if no wheat is available. Okay, well, it doesn't have any wheat, it does have one finished good uh, to move the top tile from the built buildings onto the upgraded buildings. Okay, so this is actually quite nice because it can only do it once. If it has insufficient resources to upgrade any tiles or has no tiles left, it would have gone to the home instead. Okay, so I think it's just going to do one upgrade. Okay, I will keep an eye on the chat for messages from Richard to see if I'm doing this right. But I think it's just going to spend that one and it's going to upgrade that building to there. And although it could do two, it doesn't have any more resources available. Because you can't upgrade with these. Okay, so that's its go done. It now moves this marker down to there. And it's my go. Well. Well, indeed. Um... Yeah. Options and choices. I don't know if I want to build again. And new new tiles have come out here as well. That make might make me want to do something different. Because the barn and the host house are actually that's quite a good combo there. And then we go down the animal route. I wasn't going to go down the animal route. But I think I might end up going into there. So we could try and sneak out this one. Oh, but if I do that. Hmm. Now, the discount build space is still a minimum cost of one, isn't it? From what I remember. I've not used that for a while. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the discount build space is a minimum cost of one. Wherever that is explained in the rule book, I'm sure it's in here. Because that would change my plans. Yeah, can't find it in the rules. It's definitely in here, as I remember reading it. Building tiles. Yeah, can't find it. Somebody will tell me in the chat. <laughs> is, the, is the minimum cost of building a building one thing? I think it is. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to build just yet. I think we might just go onto the mining space and convert some resources. Uh, James is asking, so is it always better to take actions that the AI has a low chance of joining you? Yeah, it depends. I, I'm deliberately... Right now, I am deliberately placing them. I, I deliberately put this boat on here in order to try and get him to join me because this is going to be my board and then I would have more meeples. And if somebody joins you, then um, uh, then you get extra actions. They get actions as well. And Caitlin said, yeah, minim minimum cost is one. I thought it was. So I, I'm actually going to go here. I'm going to use this miner on that space there. So we now need to look at whether it's going to join me or not. Uh, now that space, for the purposes of whether it's joining me or not, is treated as a raw material space, I think. Uh, yes, it's treated as a, as a raw material space. And there's a raw material space here. Ah, because we rolled there earlier on and it didn't join me. It didn't join me when I went to get wheat. So is it going to join me now? Base chance is six in six. Down by one because it would have to place white. Down by another one because it's my board. So again, if I roll a three to six, it's going to join me. And I'm deliberately doing it to draw that white keep out. It is going to join me. Gaming rules is the six. So that goes on there. And basically, I can convert. Uh, so I get three actions and I can convert one cube into two cubes three times. So I'm going to have um, another... I'm going to convert that, that, those logs into two logs, magic. Uh, I'm going to convert the clay 
into two clay. Uh, and do I need anything else? What do I need the stone for? I might not bother with the stone. I'm going to convert another log into two logs. There you go. Now, what does the ketoma do on that space? Well, I'm going to move this down before I forget. Um, raw materials. Uh, da, 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 da. Trade raw materials space. So, Ketoma has, yeah. Ketoma is not able to match a non white key pool to a field, and a Ketoma has black, then it will insert select that if, if preference, selecting a basic raw material action. When executing the trade raw materials, it, trade, it gains one of the rightmost resource type on the Ketoma's board, but not wheat. So it gains stone, uh, sorry, rocks per action and then moves the chosen resource to the leftmost right. So it's going to do three actions. So it gains three rocks, and then it moves that marker to the leftmost space. There you go. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's me done. So now it's it to go. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the flowchart again, because it doesn't have any keepers. Does it have its keeper? No. So we do a laydown action. Okay, so page 4D is where it basically it's going to do a lay down action. And if we look at the Ketoma board, we have a series here. These are the lay down actions. So we first look at the board. Is there a board in which it's got two keepers and a color match? Yes, we have three. <clears throat> we have the cows here. We have the, the logs here and we have the build action here. So we go down this here and we see that the animals is first. So what it's going to do is it's going to lay down those and it's going to get three more cows. One, two, three. So it's now got six cows. And remember, it doesn't need to house these like we do. It just saves them up like that. Six cows and one sheep. I do feel sorry for the sheep. Right, my go. I've still got two keepers left to place. So now you can join in this game. I don't have to go on an empty space. I could join. Hmm. Do I want to? I'm not sure I do. Um, I could get another couple of sheep. That might be all right. We've got space for them. Yeah, so let's do that. So I'm going to put this here and I get two sheep. There's no joining anymore because Ketoma doesn't have any keepers left. So I get two more sheeps. Okay. Then what we do is we're going to do lay down action and the next one in order is build. Yeah, the next one is build before getting raw materials. So it's going to do three build actions. Uh, and it does have six cubes. So it builds three buildings. One, two, three. Back to my go. <clears throat> I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to put it... Now, where am I going to go? Do I want to build now? No, I want tiles. That's what I want. Oh, but I can't take tiles on this board. I'd be having, to, if I took tiles, I'd be having to take them there. Oh, which is just one tile. I wanted two tiles. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not going to get the tiles that I wanted to. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Do we go down the buildings? Yeah, I think we do. I think I'm going to join. So I'm going to join there. So when you join, I think I've got this right. I'm going to lay that one down. Okay, now how many does that get me? How many actions does that get me? I think it gets me three. So I have Play the keeple. Um, yeah, so uh, if the field or plot already contains a keeple, known as the existing keeple, uh, from a previous turn, then the keeple being played may become a joiner. As a joiner, the keeple must be played to the same colour or white. Uh, the existing one may be laid down to indicate it's working a second time. So. 
yeah, the existing keeper was laid down. Uh, there was a colour match, so I get three actions. Right, excellent. Three is correct. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so I get to do three builds. Now, building to the right of the building plot is free because that's the special ability of the building plot. So I'm going to stick the pavements there for free. Then we're going to build the Cluck Cluck Chicken House ready for summer. And we are also going to build uh, the scrapyard here with some clay. Okay, so that's my three builds done. Now we go back to uh, Ketoma, and I just realized I did get this. Oh no, yeah, it, it prioritizes double lay down spaces in preference to single lay down spaces, even though the upgrade space is higher on the track. So we have a double lay down space here where it gets three wood. And this is the advantage that I was saying earlier on about running out of keepals early. Because if you run out of keepals and the other players are still taking turns, you get to do lay down actions and you basically get to do it all over again. Um, the downside of, of, of joining them is that you're joining them potentially on their board. Now what happens is I claim this board, that is my action done, uh, and then on Ketoma's turn everything else is laid down, so we just lay down one upgrade action, uh, and let me just remind myself how the upgrade action works, it's a wheat, or a finished good if none is available. Ah, I can't do any of those. So what happens now? Because it says if, if it's got insufficient resources to upgrade any tiles, it's treated as a home action instead. So I think we treat this as a home action. Yeah, so I, I think, and again, Richard will correct me if I'm wrong, but because there's no upgrading to do, we treat it as a home action, uh, which is... It gets a raw material and a finished good of the same type indicated by this marker, which then moves to there. Okay, so it gets one of those and one of those. Okay, I think that's right. And that is the end of spring. Okay, so I'll reveal my fair tile. The Ketoma doesn't have any fair tiles because I have a cow and some logs and you just need to show them off. And I'll get two points at the end of the game for that. I can house all of my animals. So that's all good. Uh, then what's going to happen is I'm going to get these back. So this is, this is the clever thing. You get back all of the keepals on the board that you claimed. Now, if you have more than nine in a two-player game, it's normally more than eight, excess ones have to go onto your keep. So I'm going to place this gray one on there. Like so. Okay. Um, Ketoma gets that and these. Now, this is what it's got. So what happens now is the white one goes at the front, then one of each is going to get shuffled and placed in a random order here, and then all of the duplicates then get placed in a random order behind. Okay, and it just so happens that it's got three different colours and two of each. So I have the advantage in terms of number of keepals going into the next round. I scored two points for my fair. You don't actually track those points on your shipping score. Uh, shipping, the, this victory point track here is only used for use of the ships. Speaking of the ships, that one goes back. Etoma claims that board. I claim this board. These spring tiles disappear. So they are out of the game. They will never come back in. But then what we do is we add the rest of the tiles to the bag. So this is the rest of the tiles that come with the game. So it was just the spring tiles in the bag for now. The rest of the tiles have gone in there. These get shuffled around. And again, we get eight of them in two rows. So one, two, three. So we could get some spring tiles. We could not. 
and all these tiles are very different. Uh, yeah, and this, this is one of those games that rewards repeated plays because the first few times you play this game, these buildings will come out and it'll be overwhelming. Um, but once you get to know the game, you spot some of the combos and you spot certain buildings and you're like, oh yeah, I know that one. I know what that one does. Uh, and although I said that a lot of them are different, there are some which are similar in the way that they work to other ones. Um, boats. We need to pick four boats. Okay, they're the two we're not using. So the four boats are, and this time we've placed them so that the summer icon is showing. We have the key flower, we have the sea bastion, we have the sea breeze, and we have the white wind. Okay, so Kitoma chooses a specific configuration, which is in the rule book, which is that. And then I choose whichever one I want. And this is the other clever part with the game is this is all done in secret and players will place it on the board at the same time. Um, but I know what I need coming up. So I'm going to place it like that. Okay. And those boards are no longer yours. Once it's back on the table, it is now neutral. Nobody owns it. Right. Is that it? Are we ready for the next season? Now, who goes first in the next season? I think it's me. Because I ended it. Kitoma took the last turn. So I think it's me. Does the last gem tile in the market need to be flipped? Oh, yeah, well spotted. <laughs> well spotted. Lorenzo's here. Nice haircut. Yes, it's actually a bit short, but thankfully I'm only mini me, so you can't see. But no, I had my haircut today for the first time in about three months. It was, yeah, crazy long. And uh, yeah, got it, got it cut this morning. Right, we are ready. We are in summer. Let me just remind myself, in summer at the fair, I need to show a sheep, some logs and some wood. Sounds like a perfect fair to me. I have the logs. I do not have the wood. And I do have the sheep and I want to get myself some chickens. Oh yeah, chickens. Hang on a minute, I need to configure this board so that I get chickens. Where's the chickens gone? Okay. Can you only get chickens from the boats? Oh no, there's a chicken. Phrases that you will never hear. So I can get chickens in ah in a three player game there was a chicken space available in spring are there any let me have a look at the rule book because the rule book contains a list of all of the different configurations of the boards in summer and I'm going to see if there's one with chickens on it no there isn't So I don't think I can get any chickens in summer from a country board. Right. So back to the original plan. Let's put the horse on there. Summer horse. Right. Done. And I'm going to go there. And I'm going to get some chickens from that. And I'm going to take it now. I'm going to take it before he does. So we're going to take one of my blue keepers. I'm going to take the white wind. Now, is there any of these boards that I want more than any other? I don't think I do. Yes, the chicken boat is out. The white wind is out. So I'm going to go on there with a blue keeper. And now we need to look if he's going to join me. If Ketoma is going to join me or not. So it's the boat action. Right. There is no, there is no boat on an action tracker. There's no boat anywhere close here. There's no boat anywhere close here. There is a boat one, two, three, four spaces away. All right. Now, four spaces away, it does not join. OK, and it, it wouldn't have joined even if it was three spaces away um, because it doesn't have a blue keeper. So it would have had to use white. So the chance of it joining me was down by one anyway. So yeah, it's not going to join me. So I just get two actions 
and I'm going to take two cluck cluck chickens. Cluck cluck. There you go. Two chickens. Nice and simple. I've got my chickens. Right. Ketomas go. Is Ketoma going to claim a board? No. So, which action is it going to do? Let's have a look. I've rolled a six. So it's going to do that action, which is the finished goods action. Now, it hasn't done this action before. So this is another new one that we're going to look at. Uh, but there are spaces on the board where it can convert raw materials into finished goods. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. And there's... Oh, right, there's none here. No. Yeah, how interesting. So it's there, there, or there. So we look at uh, the priority table, okay? And basically, it wants to convert its logs into wood because that is ahead on the priority table. So it's going to choose that space there as long as it has a brown uh, keeple available, which it does. If it didn't have a brown keeple available, uh, it, it wouldn't do it. So if it, if it wanted, even if stone was at the front, it wouldn't do the stone because it doesn't have a grey keeple. Okay? Thankfully, it does have brown, so it's going on there. Now, do I want to join? Ah, I don't have brown. Hmm. I do, I do want to join. I really do. Because I need, I need some wood. But I don't want to use my white keeple. Now, I could use my scrapyard. If, if I really didn't want to join, I could use my scrapyard. Hmm. No, I'm going to join. I'm going to join. I'm going to use a white keeper that we're going to join. So we both get to do three actions. So I'm going to do my actions first, because mine are simple. I convert the three wood, sorry, the three logs into three wood. Okay. And now we're going to look up how Ketoma works. So when selecting one of the fields, Ketoma gains a resource of the matching type, and then... For each action, it additionally converts one. So it actually cheats. It gets a magic wood out of nowhere, and then it converts three more logs into three more wood. Now, because it's done that, it then moves the priority marker to the end because it doesn't need to do that again. I think that's right. Okay. Um, so that was its action. That moves down. I joined. We're all done, and it's my go. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Mmm, cold tea. Right. I now need to get some more logs. <clears throat> do we want to claim a board? No, I do not want to claim a board. Do I want to use another boat? Aha! You see, I could get myself some points here. Or... Do we want to take some of these buildings? Because this village hall, if I manage to fill up my town, my village, could be amazing. And do I want to do some upgrades? I do want to do some upgrades. I want to do some upgrades. I want to upgrade the building plot. <clears throat> yes. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to choose the upgrade action. Now, which board do I want to use it on? Which board do I think I'm going to try and claim? I think I'm going to try and claim this board. I was going to go for that one, but I think I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to use my grey keeple on the upgrade space. Okay, so we're going to look at Ketoma. Is Ketoma interested in upgrading two away, three away, not? Right, so if it's two away, let me have a look at the sheet. If it's two away, the base chance of it following me is 50%. If it rolls a four to six, it's going to join me. Okay, that's the base chance. But it would have to join me with a white keeple because it doesn't have grey. So it goes from four to six to five to six. Nobody's claimed any boards. So it's on a five or a six. I've rolled a five. And I've destroyed all of this while I'm doing it. So it is going to join me. Okay, so before I forget, because it's joining me 
Now this was two away, this was three away, so it's joining me on there. I'm gonna put this there to say it's done it. Okay, so it is joining me, and it's joining me with a white keeple because that's all it's got. And now what happens is both of us get to do three upgrades. So I'm gonna do my upgrades first. To upgrade any building in the village costs a finished good, any finished good. So I'm gonna use uh, one, one of these wood to upgrade the building plot. Okay, I'm also, got to do that, haven't I? It's worth, it's worth more points. Uh, I think I might upgrade the scrapyard. Yeah, we're going to, ooh. Yeah, we're going to upgrade the scrapyard. So that again costs a finished good. Okay, and then we're going to upgrade the pavements. And thematically, I'm going to upgrade the pavements with stone. So there you go. I did three upgrades. I've not upgraded any of my farm buildings. I've just upgraded my village buildings because these are worth more points. Right, now, Kitoma is going to do potentially three upgrades. Now, remind me, an upgrade costs wheat or a finished good. So it uses three finished goods to upgrade three buildings. There you go. Done. Uh, so that was my go. It chose to follow me, which is why the temporary action marker is there. So now it's its go. And now we need to check to see if it's going to claim a board. Because the CBV of this board is two. Yeah, minus four. And then we've got plus four, plus another two. So it's two. So I'm going to roll. And on a one or a two, it's going to claim this board. It's a two. I have rolled a two. So it's doing it again. It's an early claim. There you go. Now that means it's going to get those two white keeples. So I probably want... Remember you can upgrade the village with wheat. Oh yeah, I can. Thank you. Yeah. I'll keep the wheat for now. But yes, the wheat will replace any white resource, but not a specific resource. So it's not completely a wild. It's only a wild if the resource that's needed is a wild resource. More cold tea. I'm already starting to click. This, this is one of those games where, yeah, the first time you play it, you're going to have to be looking up rules in the rule book. You're gonna, but once, once you've got through it, and if you play it repeatedly, it, it's going to click because the AI is, although it's complex, it's intuitive, okay? So you've got to think, what would a human player do in this situation? Oh, well, it, it would do this. You know, it's trying to maximise its own points. So it does, it does fit, but Richard and David have worked really hard on this. And, you know, converting, converting an AI into words in a rulebook is, is quite a tough challenge. Uh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, I wanted to use boat over there, but it's going to get that, isn't it? Sneaky, 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 sneaky. Um, we've, there's nothing here that needs wheat. We're a bit short on resources. We could start doing things. Oh, I could join again. I could, I could put this one on here with that boat. I'm completely allowed to do that. I think, yeah. Yeah, I've understood this, this game correctly. I, mean, I could place this blue keeple on here and join that one. Let me know if I can. I think I can. I'm not going to right now because uh, Ketoma's not going to do that. So I'm not in any rush to do that. But yeah, am I right in thinking I could put that blue keeple there and join and then lay that one down and I'd get another three actions? What are we going to take? Come on, Paul, think. You need a horse at some point, which means you're going to need to build a stable at some point. So you're going to need some logs at some point. So I'm going to use my miner and I'm going to go here. Now, Ketoma is not going to join me. This, this is actually a lot simpler now because Ketoma does not have a matching keeple and does not have white. OK, so Ketoma is completely out. Um, yeah, so it's just me. So I'm going to convert that clay 
into two logs. Then I'm going to convert one of those logs into two stone. Then I'm going to convert one of those stone into logs and clay. There you go. Okay, and that's me done. Right, what's Ketoma going to do? Let's have a look at Ketoma's board. Four, so it's using the middle column, it's going home. Okay, so this is really simple. It puts a marker there and it gets the one that's there or the one that's there. Just check. Rightmost non wheat resource, yeah. So it gets another wood and some logs and then that shuffles down to there. Okay, and it's done that, so that moves down to there. Okay, done. My go. Um, could it have been two actions as they didn't join you? Yeah, absolutely right, Paul. I'm cheating again. Thank you. I'll take a, I'll take a wood off. There you go. And Richard has just confirmed I did get two converts and not three. I'm so used to doing three actions. Um, right, okay. What have I got left? Orange, green, blue. There's, there's still the outstanding question of can I join there, lay that down and get three blue actions, three boat actions. I think I can, but I just like to just like to convert, confirm that. Now, you don't have to colour match as well. This is the other very important thing about this game. Me, being the kind of person that I am with Euro games, is I always want the most efficient action possible. You do not have to colour match. If I really needed this action, I can go there with an orange keeple. I will only get one action rather than two, but you can do that. And part of my brain just can't acknowledge the fact that I could be doing something that's inefficient. But actually, you do need to consider that. Because right now, okay, I can join on a boat. Right now, I need to be building and the build space... In fact, where are the build spaces? <laughs> the build spaces have gone. Right. Okay, so. Interesting. Yeah, the normal build spaces are not here on this particular board layout. So, fascinating. I think, oh, there's so many things I want to do. Like, pack this game up, reset it, and now play again. <laughs> now that I've, now that I'm starting to get it, just slowly, he says. Okay, I, oh, do we want another boat? Do we want points for the boat? No, I think I'm going to do that with the boat. Yeah, that, that's totally happening with the boat. So, I think we're going to do the discount build space. And I'm going to try and get him to join me. Does he want to build? Oh, he might. Yes, he does. Right, I'm going to try and tease one out. Here we go. So I'm going to place this orange keeple on the discount build space here. Okay, so. Yes, discount build space. You can also build by placing a keeple on the tile you wish to build. Oh, I had completely forgotten about that. Yeah, you can just build by building one thing and putting a thing on it but i i want it cheap i want a discount build right so is ketoma going to join me ketoma really wants to build right now so that's a six in six chance it does have a matching keeple but it is on my board or what's going to be my board so therefore chance of it joining me is five in six jonathan's just joined in from the hexy beast good afternoon jonathan if you like solo games, Jonathan definitely likes his solo games. This is the cleverest AI that I have ever seen in a solo game. I can go on record and say that because it is. Um, yeah, I think this is five in six. So, yes, it's joining me. So it's joining me with one of its orange keepals. We're going to get two actions each. I think that's right. I think it's joining me on a discount build space uh, and that means that marker is going to move down to there. 
Uh, discount build space. If you played on a build field, uh, yeah, if you played on a discount build field and it has at least one resource of any type to spend. Yeah, so it is going to join me. Uh, I'm going to get two discount builds. So, now, wh yeah, where in the rules is the rules for discount builds? Because I couldn't find it. It's definitely in here. I think you, you just get a discount of... Because if, if this isn't the wild resource, I'm not going to do this. I just need to check the rules on the discount build field. Um, yeah, if you remember where it is in the rule book, please let me know. Upgrading building tiles, building. Discount build field. Yeah, where is the discount build field explained? Because then all of the building tiles are explained. Yeah, I'm just not seeing where it is. I mean, it's definitely in here because I read it and I've used it. And I learned how to play the game from the rule book. So, definitely in here. Where, which, which page of the rulebook is the discount build field explained on? Because my question is, does it give me a discount of just the white resource? And therefore, do I need the other one? Because if I do, I probably wouldn't have done this. Page 13. Or top of second column. Thank you. Couldn't find it for looking. <clears throat> uh, or top of column. Must pay the build cost uh, or as modified under 2, 3 or 4 above. So discount build field on a country board. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So my question is, what is the cost to build the carpenter using the discount build field? Can I get, is, is it literally what the icon says? I ignore the white one, which means I have to use brown, because then I can't use wheat. Because I was hoping to do two builds with this, and I don't, I don't think I can, because I only have, if, yeah, if the discount build field knocks the white one off, and the white one is what I would use for the for the wheat, then I'm actually not going to do this. Let's let's just undo that. Didn't happen. Didn't see anything here. Nobody's watching. Move along. Uh, did we do anything on here? No. No, I didn't do anything on here. Yeah. Richard is saying either a resource or a wheat. Yeah, so, no, so my, my question is, the cost to build a carpenter is a wood and any other finished good. Now, the wheat can take the place of the white one, but the wheat cannot take the place of the brown one. And the discount build field appears to be a discount of anything. So what I'm saying is, can I use the discount build field to move that? To, to, can, I, can I use the discount build field to get the discount of the wood so that I only... I think what Richard is saying is yes. In which case, I can do what I'm doing. So Paul is telling me I needed to move the grey marker up, but actually I, I don't because I think we're good. Okay, so yes. So with the discount build field, you can do it. So I'm going to say I'm going to build the carpenter and use the discount build field to get a discount of the wood, which means I just have to pay the other one, which I'm going to pay for it with wheat. And that goes there. And then I'm going to uh, build the brick maker. I've put these in the wrong place, haven't I? Again, using the same thing, using the discount build field to get the discount of the bricks. Okay, you can. Excellent. Then I use the other wheat to build the brick maker there. Okay, so that's my two builds done. Oof. Um, Ketoma's two builds is very simple. It's that and that for two more buildings. One, two. Okay, 
Right, so I, I managed to tease out one of the orange ones onto what would be my board by doing a discount build action. Does it does it still pay if it's who builds Ketoma may not join you? Yeah, I think it still does, even on a discount build field. Ignore the build cost on the country tile. Yeah, I think it still spends two. Oh no, or one if the discount build fit. No, it was one. I'm going to put two of those back. There you go. It was only one. Right. So that's that done. So now it's Ketoma's go. So what is Ketoma going to do? Ketoma is going to two. It's going to try and get animals. Right, now this is where, for the first time in the game, we look at its priority chart. So pigs is what it wants to collect. So we look at the boards to see if there are any pigs available. There are no pigs available. So we go to the next one, which is boars. Are there any boars available? No, there are no boars available. Um, yes, this is based on a D6 roll to decide what, it, what action it's going to do. Sheep, is there any sheep available? Yes, there is. The sheep available on both spaces and it does have a farmer meeple available. So it's going to do it and it's going to use the board which it has chosen. It has already claimed that board. So that's where it's going to go. And it's going to get from that two sheep. And then this sheep marker is going to go to the end because it no longer needs to collect sheep. Okay, am I going to join? I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not for two reasons. I don't want to give it any more keepers. Oh, but if I run out quick. Because I could get, no, no, I'm not going to join. I don't want to give it any more keepers, but also I don't want the three sheep. If I get the three sheep, I'm nowhere to store them unless I then use the sea bastion, which requires me to put a blue keeper on that board. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. I am just going to let it have two sheep. There you go, Samantha and Stephen. Yes, I do name all of my animals. They need, they need googly eyes. That's what this game needs, Richard. It need, you needed a stretch goal to give the animals googly eyes. Definitely. I'd have backed it. Right. That's it, done. It went on the animal space, which means this marker moved down to there. And now it's my go. So... I think we need to replenish our wheat supplies. Do we need any of these tiles? Am I missing out on good stuff here? I think I am. I mean, I'm not very good at this game, so definitely don't view this as a strategy guide on how to play it in terms of how to play it well. <laughs> um, I've got enough for the next fair. I'm all right for that. The fair after that requires gold, and we won't, we're not going to get gold until autumn and winter. That's where we need the miners. This is going to get, yeah, okay. Can I try and tease out another one of these? No, I can't. Okay, so it's going to be, it's going to be wheat. Yeah, so I'm going to go on there and I just get two wheat. It's nice and simple because it can't join me. Um... Right. Done. Ketomas go. I've rolled a six. So it's using this column. So it's going to take tiles. Now, what spaces are available where it can take tiles? There, on my board. So that's what it wants to do. So that's what it's going to do. So it's going to put an orange keeple on there. Do I want to join? Hmm. Interesting. I think I do. I think I think I'm going to join. So I have to join with white. And now what happens is Ketoma gets the first choice and then I get second and third and then it gets fourth. So I'm going to move this marker down already. So that's what it's done and I'm going to roll the dice. Okay, so the first one it's going to take is one, six. Is that the one I wanted? I don't know. Right, no. 
I'm going to take the gem merchant and the merchant. They're the two I'm taking. Country tiles also on Ketoma's board. Is it? Oh yeah, I didn't see it. Sorry. It's there. I didn't see it. I was blind. Okay, I've still joined, so that's fine. That means it's going to get three white keeples. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, and then it takes... Thank you, Richard. I didn't spot that. It's right in front of me. Going blind. Uh, two, three. So it takes that one. Okay. And then we replenish those tiles. One, two, three, four. And if you are watching this and you're interested, oh, that shouldn't be in there. Um, the I'm only playing the keeper, the keeper base game solo today. You can play, as mentioned at the start, um, you can play the Keeper at Sea Shallow Water version with the solo mode. So you can play solo base game or solo game with Shallow Water, which I didn't feel brave enough to do myself today. Um, that's all done. My go. I'm going to place this white one. What do we want to do? See, there's a part of the game we've not covered yet, and that is placing keepals into your home area. Yeah, haven't done that at all. Um, hmm. I could go joining. I could absolutely go joining and just stock up on the raw materials. Is that going to help me? I don't know if it is. So when you use your own um, buildings, I think you just get to do it once. That's something I, I, I rarely do in the game because it's a part of the game that I, I can get my head around the rest of the stuff, but using your own buildings, which is one reason why I tend not to do it that much. Um, but yeah, you can, you can place your keepals on a building in your um yeah, yeah, yeah on a country board yeah you can also place it onto your home area now where is that in the rules yeah any colored keeple can be played onto either a field on a country board or on a plot that contains a building tile on the player's own board it's, using, it's in the rules for using your buildings, I think. Upgrading your buildings, using your buildings. Yeah, and you can overbuild as well. I don't know how common overbuilding is. Um, but yeah, is it is it just once? I think it is. Yeah, I think you go on here and you just use the building once, but nobody gets to join you uh, and you can't do anything else. So it's, do I want to do that? I'm not sure I do. I don't like the idea of getting more stuff. So yeah, let's, let's get more stuff. So I'm going to go, ah, now this is interesting. I might be able to tease out that brown meeple. Do I want to? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to send this white keeple off into the forest to collect some logs. And by doing that, it can join. I think it can join. Um, overbuilding is more common in Keeper at Sea as there is a developer tile. Yes, there's an extra tile included, which gives you points if you do that. Um, but yeah, so my question is now, will it, will it join? because it's got brown. I think it can. So let's have a look at the board. Uh, raw materials. Where is the raw materials next? Uh, nope. Two away. So it's, it's two away. So the chance of it joining is four to six, but it's minus one because it's my board. So it's five to six, but it can join with the keeper of the matching color. I think that's right. Um, 
oh yeah, you can join yourself and later, yeah, yeah. So Ketoma can join with Brown. So we're rolling. It's going to join on a five or a six. Doesn't join. Okay. So I get to get two logs. Kind of didn't want it to join, so that's good. Right, it's go. Let's have a look at what it's doing. Roll the one, so it's going to do this column, and it's building. Now, it's only got three of these, so this is really, really inefficient action. Well, let's, let's have a look at the building. Um, let's see what building we've only got this space here. There is only one building space available. Um, yeah, so this is, if it has four or more, it does not, then it would place it on a build space. If it doesn't, it places a keeper on a discount build field, uh, which is there. Okay, so do I want to join? No, I don't, but I can't anyway. Uh, so then because it's a discount build field, it builds three buildings. Wow. Look at all those buildings that it's built. Huge amount. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, it's not three, it's only two. It gets two actions, not three. Yeah. Is it two actions? No, it's only one action. <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. It's one action. Another one if it colour matches, and another one if it's joined. So that's just one build at a discount. Done. My go, I am going to go on here, I'm going to lay down that one, and I get three actions. With those three actions, I am going to take two more chickens in, and I am going to uh, sell some logs. I got my first points. Right, ketomas go. There are two on there, two on there, and two on there. So we have an upgrade space, a finished goods space, and a collecting tile space. Which is the top one on the board? It is the upgrade space. So that's what it's going to do first in preference to that or that. Yeah, so it's going to do the upgrade. So it's going to lay down these two uh, and it's going to do uh, three upgrade actions. Yeah, I think three upgrade actions. Except he's only got two of these, so it does one, two. Right, my go, I claim this board. Ketomas go again. We go down to the taking of tiles. Yeah, which is here. Now it gets to do that twice because there's no colour match. Uh, so we roll, uh, yeah, we roll to see what it takes. So one, four is that one. And, oops, 2, 4 is that one. Okay, so it's taken those, we replenish those. And then that is the end of the season. Oof. Okay, so, I'll hold my fair, which is sheep, logs, wood. Check. Done. That's going to get me four points at the end of the game. Um, I've got this board again. So I... Oh, when I laid down, I'm all supposed to lay that down and I get a spare thing. Get some more logs. Yeah, so any keepers you have in excess of eight, whenever you play your keeper, uh, you lay down any keepers on your keep. Take those back. It's going to get all of these. It's got way more than eight. Sorry, nine. Has it got made another nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's got ten. It's got ten. The white ones go first. I'm going to have to read the rules on which ones it doesn't use. So it's got excess of green and brown. Okay. So orange, black, brown, grey. Green. I think it's one of these it will take. And then the other one, let me have a look at the rules. So, end of the season. Uh, if it has excess of nine, place the keepers not fitting into the queue on Ketoma's home area. 
Um, for each keeple placed, it gains one different animal. Taking the animals shown in the left of the priority spaces do not change. So it gets a pig. Okay. So that's what it got for having more than more than nine keeples. Um, the boats, they get shuffled back in. Ketoma selects country tiles with two dice rolls. Oh, these here. Yes, I, I was I was rolling two dice, so I was doing that correct. Okay, so we have uh, the sea bastion on the autumn side, sea flower on the autumn side, sea breeze, and the invincible on the autumn side. Right, that's that done. These tiles disappear. Get rid of those. Let's get eight new ones. Oh, that's an expansion one. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Right, so. Okay, that's its board. That's my board. What am I going to have? Let me have a look here. Definitely having that one. I've not got enough. I've, yeah, so, well, I say I've not got enough. I've got enough. I don't have any excess this time. Yeah, I've got eight. Okay, so. Autumn. Now, what do we want now? I think we need... Oh, I didn't get the horse, did I? Oh, have I messed this up? I've messed this up. Oh, I needed to get a horse because there's no horses available in autumn, I don't think. Or are there? Can I somehow configure this board to get a horse in autumn? I don't think I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can configure the board to get a horse in autumn. Right, so Ketoma configures it. Uh, oh, the same way. Okay, which means I probably will do it that way, just to be on the safe side. So, are we doing it like that? No, it's not doing it like that. These boards are really clever. <laughs> but finding, Finding the option that you want. Is it that one? Yes, it's that one. Right, it's exactly the same. So we've got two boards identical this season. Okay, uh, what else do we need to do? I think we're good. It's me first. Yeah, I think it's me first. Right, do we have a plan? Yes, I need to get a horse. I need to get a horse and I need to get a gold. And I then want to get some gems. That's my that's my plan. Horses, gold, and emeralds. And building things. Okay, I wish I hadn't have built those now. Anyway, right, let's go and do the first thing. And let's go here and get a horse. So let's look on Ketoma's board. Ketoma wants to get animals. Does have a green meeple. And the board hasn't been claimed. So it's definitely joining me. And we both get three horses. One, two, three. Now, I don't have a home for these horses yet, but I will build a stable soon. One, two, three. Whereas these are running wild. Back them up. Okay, right. Uh, which means we move this marker down here. Right, now it is Ketoma's go. Yeah, do we have a plan? We do have a plan. Just. It is a six. So Kitoma is using a boat action. Now we've not seen this yet, um, but it doesn't have a blue fisherman meeple. So does it? I think it does, but it would use white. Um, oh, is it going to claim a board? It's not going to claim a board. Right, yeah. Too early for claiming a board. So. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, it's gonna it's gonna place a boat, um, and it's gonna use a white keeple. So let's have a look at the boat action, because it's not done this before. Uh, so it will choose a boat where Kitoma can sell the most. So if it chooses this one, it can sell three things. If it chooses that one, it can only sell one thing. If it chooses that, it can sell three things. So it's either Sea Breeze or Sea Bastion. Uh, when it needs to select a boat, yeah, if if multiple boats are tied, then out of the tied boats, select the boat carrying the animal furthest to the left on the animal priority spaces, which is the cow. So it's going to select the sea breeze. It's going to put it on either there or there. It's going to put it on here because this has got the lowest value. It's going to use white because it doesn't have blue. And do I want to join? Now that is interesting because there's the gold. And I do want the gold. Gold is like... One of these nice things. I mean, I do need the gold. So I think I'm going to do it. Do I just join and get three gold? Yeah, why not? So I'm going to put my blue meeple on there. We both get three actions. I'm going to take three, three gold and it sells three cows. So it sells three cows, one, two, three, and gets six points. There you go. I think that's right. Similar country boards, but not identical. Oh no, they're slightly different. So I think I've done the wrong one. Let me just have a look. Yeah, I've done the wrong one. Apologies for that. That's what it should be. Yeah, I gave it the wrong one. So we, we are identical. Uh, okay, and then that action tracker moves down, and now it is my go. Okay, so we got the horses. We need to build the stables. We need to do a build action at some point, and we need to put that and that. So I think I'm going to do the build action now. Now, where's the build actions gone? The build actions have gone. Oh, I've done it again. So it's going to have to be... A generic build action space. Or put a meeple on a thing to build the thing. But no, I think I think generic build action space. Or sorry, the discount build action space. Oh, this is tricky. Or do we just get the emeralds? I think I might try and get the emeralds. I'm going to go here. Okay. And is it going to join me? Is it going to join me? Let's have a look. Uh, so the gems, there's a gems here, which is one, two, three away. There's a gems here, which is one, two, three away. So <clears throat> three away. Three away means it's joining on a six only. And it does have the, the right color and the board hasn't been claimed. So it, basically on a six, it's going to join me. And I've rolled a two. So it's not joining me, so I get two emeralds. Okay, nice. Right, it's go. It's a one, so it's going to do the building action. It doesn't have any resources. It's got, it's got no resources whatsoever. So does it still do the build action? I think it does, but it does a home action instead. Yeah, if Ketoma has not got sufficient resources to move a tile, treat it as a home action instead. So it does that, that moves down to there, it skips over that, but what it does is it places that in its home, and it takes a bricks and a clay, and that moves to the end. I think that's right. Let me know if I've got that right, Richard. I think that's right. My go. I want to claim a board. Oh, I'm always claiming boards too late in this game. And I think it's okay. We need we need to build. Let's do let's do the discount build action. And let's discount build with. I've got all these oranges, and oranges are no use whatsoever. 
So I might as well use an orange and we're going to go here. We're going to go into a discount build field here. So it could join me. Does it want to build? No, one away. So it's one away. So the default chance is four to six. And it can color match. So it's four, five or six. And it's a five. So it is going to join me with an orange keeple there. And we both get two discount builds. So I can do it first because that's that and that two builds. And me. I'll tell you what, this was free anyway. Yeah, so the merchant is free. If I put the merchant there, that's actually free. Oh, no, because it's a minimum cost of one. Eh. So I'm going to put the stable there, uh, here, which costs logs. I've got somewhere for my horses. Okay. And I'm going to put the gem merchant. Oh, I can't. Messed it up. Oh, rats. Gem merchant requires stone and bricks. Yes, I've got the free builds. I, I think I'm going to have to do that. I was hoping to... Yeah, so it's going to have to be the free build for the gem merchant. It's just that I'm getting a discount on it as well. So, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, whose action was that? That was my action. And it joined me. Now, where did we roll for it joining me? It was that one, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was that one. So we put a temporary marker on there to show that it's done that. Okay, right. So it's go. Tom's here. Hi, Tom. Thank you for joining in. Not seen you for ages. So yeah, we're rolling. And it is a two. So it's this column, it's taking tiles. Where can it take tiles? Let's there and there. Oh, no, we need to roll before that. Is it going to claim this board? One, two, three, four, five, six. On a one or two, it's going to claim this board. Oh, okay, so forget that. It's claiming the board. There you go. <clears throat> this game's following a pattern. It's always doing that. It's always claiming the board. Right, back to me. So I don't want to put anything else on that board. Oh, it went for that one again. I should have spread them out. That was my fault. That was definitely my fault. Okay, well, I want to upgrade the gem merchant. Uh, I also want to build that merchant there. Um, oof. What else do we want to do? Boats. Do we want to put something on a boat? Maybe. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. We don't have any farmers left. Oh, I'm not happy about it claiming that board. Really not happy about that. Um, do we just go and get ourselves two more emeralds? Does it want gems anytime soon? Maybe. Oh. Yeah. This is not what we wanted. Not what we wanted at all. Hmm. I could go and get myself some more stone. Is that going to be any use at all? I don't think it is. I could be used to upgrade stuff. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to place this grey worker here, on here, to try and get myself some more resources. Monica's having trout tonight. Oh, and John's here as well. Hi, John. Thank you for joining in. Not seen you for ages as well. Um, so I'm going there to get some raw materials. And yeah, it wants to get raw materials. So the, the default chance is six in six. It has a grey uh, keeple available, but it's on my board. So the chances are five in six. Tom's wearing his Gridcon t-shirt, watching Paul playing a game. Yes. And I hope to see you in November. It's still a long way off. I rolled a one. So it's not going to join me. A one, yeah, anything other than a one. And it would have joined me then, I think. 
yeah, he was going to join me on a on a one to six, but it's at minus one because it's my board, so it doesn't join me. So I just get two rocks. Two rocks. Done. Ketomas go. We're rolling, and we've got a six, so it is getting raw materials itself. Okay, so what raw, raw, what raw materials does it want? It wants to get some rocks, and it does have this available, and there is a space available. There are two spaces on each board. So it will go on the board which it's claimed, and now we have another tiebreaker that we haven't seen yet in this playthrough. Um, if there is a field on the country board that the ketoma has already claimed, yes. Um, in the event of a tie, yep. Yeah. If no fields yet, oh, where is the tiebreaker? I read this somewhere. Fields. I'm going to move this down before I forget. Um, choosing fields. If Ketoma's action chooses a field that is available more than once on the country boards, determine the field. If there is a field containing a single colored keeple, it would join that. Ah, so it will go here in preference to going on any of the others. If there is a field containing a single coloured keeple and the ketoma has a keeple of that colour, it joins it. So there you go, that's the first priority. If it can join somebody else, it will. Because then it gets three resources. So even though it's giving me... Where's the, uh, where's the rock gone? Oops. Have I run out? I can't have run out. Surely not. There they are. Bag of rocks. One, two, three. Right, so because it could join me there, it does, in preference to it going anywhere else. Right, interesting. My go. So this is going to be my board. Totally going to be my board. Can I, can I squeeze any of those other keepers out? By getting any more stuff. Is there an upgrade space? There is. Do I have grey? I do not have grey. I want to upgrade all of these by the end of the game because that's loads of points. I think that's probably what we want to do. I, I don't know what we're going to do with the blue. Possibly build? Hmm. Do I want any of these tiles? I've not really looked at these tiles. That fair is no good for me. Hunter's Lodge is no good for me. Bracelet Maker is no good for me. Stoneyard, Brickyard and Timberyard have all come out. <laughs> um, the Ringmaker would be great, but I'm already planning on making these. And I'm planning to get upgrade that and use some rubies next turn. Ooh, this is tricky. This is, this is very tricky. So I think I'm going to do two upgrades. I'm going to go on the upgrade space with a white keeple. So is it going to join me? Uh, no, it's not going to join me because it doesn't have any resources available that it can use to upgrade. So I, I think that's the first thing. Uh, it may join you if you played on an upgrade field and it has at least one wheat or that. It doesn't. Okay, so it's not going to join me. So I get to do two upgrades. I spend one wheat to upgrade the gem merchant, the fancier gem merchant, and I spend uh, one cube to upgrade the cluck cluck chicken house to a super cluck cluck chicken house. That's worth 12 points at the end of the game. Right, that's my go done. Ketomas go. We're going to roll the dice. We've rolled a two. So it's going to take tiles. Uh, which is going to be here, and it's going to use that. I cannot join, so it takes um, one tile, and it's a four followed by a five, so it's that one. There, that goes there. That gets replenished. It's starting to flow a bit better now. As I say, this is a complex, complex game with a complex solo mode, but very rewarding. Um, once, you, once you've played it a bit and you get used to it. 
That's its go done. I already moved it down, so my go. Got blue and the orange. The blue and the orange. Oh, yes, and Richard makes a very good point. Uh, the Kickstarter that is running right now for this game is not your normal Kickstarter. There are limited numbers available, uh, and the Kickstarter has gone well. So, yes, they will all be gone very shortly. Richard has got a fixed print run for the game in order to meet the deadlines and the timescales of it. Um, so if you do want this game, then definitely consider backing it. Don't wait until the last 24 hours, because they might all be gone. Um... Right, I've got two keepers left to place. I'm not going to colour match on any of them unless I use the blue one on the boat, which they might join me. Do they want to do a boat action anytime soon? No, so they're probably not going to join me if I do a boat action. This is, this is the other clever thing about this, get this game, just going off at a side tangent. Although we are rolling dice to see whether the Ketoma is going to join us or not, you can look at this board. So right now, I'm, I'm saying if I place a boat, the chances of them joining me are slim because it's one, two, three spaces away. So that would, in fact, there's zero because that would mean I'd need to roll a six. But because it's on my board, it's, it's not applicable. So yeah, you can actually use all of this stuff here to your advantage to know whether they are more likely to join you or not. Which is a whole extra level which I didn't think I'd be able to get to, but I kind of have, but actually, I, no, I, I want them to join me. I want to choose an action where they are going to join me so that I get one of their white keepals, which could be gems. Or upgrades. Now, I've already gone on the upgrade space. I can't join that. I could go there, but I don't want to. Uh, or get in, get in more of those. I could do that. No, it's not very good, though, is it? Hmm. Do I need this? No, I don't. I need, I need a horse and gold at this fair. I've got a horse and gold. So... could go there but getting them do I need them no I don't oh this is this is so tricky I am I'm gonna use this is super inefficient super super inefficient maybe I don't <laughs> I want to get the merchant out because it's a nice easy three points Then again, drainage, that would be four points if I got that out. Drainage there would be, oh no, that would be awful. That would be two points. That's a really bad place for the drainage. Drainage should have been here. Yeah, that's where drainage should have been. Should have put that there. I don't know what to do with these two actions. I really don't. So rather than overthinking it, I'm going to go here and see what happens. So I'm not colour matching. Um, so I'm using an orange key pull on a black space to get one action. Now, they might join me. They are, they might join me. Right, okay, because if we look at the board, he really wants to get gems. Six in six chance. However, could only do it by placing white down to five in six. And it's my board down to four in six. So we're going to roll, and it is a four. So I think, even though I didn't colour match the board, I think they can join with white. Have I understood that correctly? Because it's, it's actually quite rare that I don't colour match. Poof, joining. Um, must either be the same colour as the keeple played or white. Yeah. Okay, so yes. And both players now get two actions because there's no colour match to the space. So both of us get two gems. 
and that marker goes down to there. Right, that is it. That is my go done. Now it is Ketoma's go. Sorry for the delay on that one. Five, uh, upgrading. Can he upgrade? No, he hasn't got any stuff to upgrade. But does a home action instead. That goes to there. He gets one stone, one rocks. Done. My go. Uh, we're back to the same situation again. Um, so I'm, I'm already, I need some gold going into the, uh, going into the last round. So we could just get it with this blue one. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Uh, he's probably not going to join me now. Now the gems is one, two, three away, which is a six. He'd have to place a Y. No, not going to join me. And I get one gold. Super inefficient. That's fine. Ketomas go. I've rolled a six. He's going to go home. Getting some wood and some logs. And then my go, I claim this board. And then on its go, we look at a laydown action. So are there two, two on a gem space? No. Two on an animal, animal space? No. Two on a boat space? Yes, there are two on a boat space. So it lays them down and gets three boat actions and sells three cows for six points. Nice. And then that is it. That is the end of the season. So we reveal the fair tile. I have a horse and some gold. There you go. Look at my nice horse. Look at my gold. Uh, we get rid of these tiles. And we're about to go into the final season of the game. I think once you knew what you're doing, this would probably be about an hour and a half. Uh, obviously, it's been a bit slow today because I'm streaming it and I'm still learning it. Um, but it's, all, it's, it's going a lot faster as time goes on. Uh, I think that's the special one. Yeah, special one. I accidentally left some of the special tiles in. Oh, and an expansion tile, and another expansion tile, and another expansion tile, and another expansion tile. So yes, you get quite a few expansion tiles with the new game. There we go. Right, okay, boats. Jonathan says he needs a gridcon. Yes, so gridcon 2 will be happening at the end of November. Uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you've got a ticket or not because um, we did sell out. Obviously, some people haven't been able to make it. Um, but there has also been a lot of demand for Gridcon 2 tickets. So they're not currently available. Um, if you are interested in attending Gridcon at the end of November, uh, my patron supporters will get first, first dibs on them. It's only fair because they support me in everything that I do. So, yeah, if you are a patron supporter of mine, you will get first dibs on any tickets that become available for Gridcon. Watch this space. We will be doing an announcement at some point. But yeah, I, I think there might only be 15, 20 tickets are made available, if that. Because uh, as I say, we did, we did sell out and it's, it's only now for the people who, who have had to cancel and can't make it. But there will be a Gridcon 3, uh, which will be happening, I think, in February, I think we said. Uh, and then there'll be a Gridcon 4 in the summer, and then a Gridcon 5 next winter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One more. And then that one goes in there, and they get an animal, which is a pig. Okay, and that's, they take this board, uh, and they are going to configure this like so. Right, let's get this right this time. There. Ah, it's how I had it before. Right, so these are mine. So what have I got this round? I've got two white. I've got two grey. Don't want grey. I've got a blue. I do like blue. Two green. Don't really need green at this point. I've got an orange. Yeah. Right, how are we going to configure this board? I need rubies. Rubies is what I need in order to make my very, very nice gems there. I think that might be the only configuration for rubies. And I don't have black. Ah. 
Kitoma got the, both the black ones. Rats. <clears throat> and it's me first. Uh, what else do we need to do? Did we cycle the tiles? We did. Did we do that? We did. I think we're ready to go. Okay, so. Sean is in the chat as well. Hi, Sean. Uh, right, off we go. I need the rubies. I desperately need the rubies. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to have to go there. And I'm going to have to use the white keeple to go there. So I at least get two. And I need to get another two. So I want to probably run out of keeples early in order to do the lay down actions, which means I'm going to have to claim the board early. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Right, is Ketoma going to join me? The gems is three away here. It's three away here. That's a six. It can join me with black. So it might join me. If we roll a six, it's going to join me. I've rolled a five. It doesn't join me. So I get two rubies. Right. Ketomas go. I've rolled a five. So it's going to build. Right. Now, build space is available. There is a build space available there. It does have resources to build. There's one available there as well. And it's got orange. So it goes on this board because this is the one with the least value. Do I want to join? Yes. Absolutely I want to join. Boom. Right. So three builds each. I am going to build. What am I going to build? Um, well, in fact, may I, maybe I will build the drainage. It's a point. Yeah, let's build the drainage there for free. The point. I'll build the merchant there for some wood. And I'm going to build the uh, the pigsty. Don't really matter. Yeah, I'll build the pigsty for a stone. Uh, not stone, rocks. All right, that's my three build done. Itoma, one, two, three. One, two, three. Done. That was that column. That moves down. My go. Oh, pay rise. An extra big Jaffa cake. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, in fact, I'm getting very hungry. And my half cup of tea is very cold. <laughs> I will celebrate later by having a Jaffa cake. I know that. I'm not going to win. So I'm not going to say I'm going to celebrate my win by getting a Jaffa cake because the chances of me winning, no. I, I already know everything that I've done wrong. Um, but I'm, ha I'm happy with how I've played, considering I'm not that good at the game. Oh, we didn't do the boats. That's what we didn't do. I knew there was something we didn't do. Let's place the merchant on row three to score from the pavement. So the, nah, so the pavements, if you look at my board, the pavements score uh, all the orthogonal directions. It's the drainage that scores in the diagonals. So in fact, the merchant doesn't matter where I place it because the pavements, I'm already getting eight points for the pavements. So I'm happy with that. Oh, you're making trout come up. Well, we're having salmon tonight. Um, yeah, we're having this really nice salmon that uh, Vicky cooked yesterday with a nice topping. Right, winter side of the boats. Okay, well, that changes things because there's rubies there. But I know that. I'd have gone with that instead. Never mind. Right. Uh, my go. Actually, I need some rubies. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's take the flipper. And... The number of meeples you have at the end of the game is irrelevant unless... You have certain buildings which give you points. Now, we have fares here. Is any of these fares going to be any good for me? No. Because I haven't got any deers, I haven't got any goats. There's an entertainer, I don't know what that does. Oh, it's for fares. Okay. Uh, Rich is saying fourth row for drainage as it scores for everything in that column. Oh, does it? Fourth row for drainage. It scores for everything in that column. 
Hang on, have I have I misunderstood pavements and drainage? Oh yes, I have misunderstood pavements and drainage. That's what you're telling me in the chat. Sorry, I thought it was just gaps are allowed. So it's a maximum of six points. Yeah, okay, thank you. So it goes there. That's what you meant. I, I, I thought it was just the orthogonal spaces, but it's not. It's orthogonal in those directions. So actually, yeah, drainage, if I put something, I'm, st I'm, I'm better putting that there for the pavements. So thank you. I wasn't understanding what you were saying earlier on. Uh, Sean is asking, is the standard version of Keeper? Yeah, so the standard edition of Keeper is what I'm playing here with the Keeper at Sea um, solo rules. The character version has very, very nice uh, individually, um, yeah, individual character meeples, which each have a special ability if you're playing with a, a little mini expansion. Okay, right. So I'm taking Flipper and I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to put a blue meeple on it, blue keeple on it. And is Ketoma going to join me? No board has been claimed. Ketoma does have a blue one. The boat is one space away. So it's a three to six. So going to join me? One. Not going to join me. So I get to do that twice and I'm going to take two rubies. That means I have maxed out this gem merchant. That is 24 points. Now that's an achievement right there, I think. There you go, look at that. Some kids are outside with a beatbox. Not the 80s, you know. Right, Ketomas go. It's a three. So it's going to finished goods is what it wants to do. Um, okay, so finished goods spaces. <laughs> there is one. It's there. I think that's the only one that's available. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how these boards evolve over time. Uh, so it's going there. And do I want to follow? Oh, in fact, does it claim a board? No, it doesn't. Do I want to follow? Do I want to follow? Now, if I do follow, I haven't actually got any finished goods. So no, no, I do not want to follow. No, I'm not. So I'm going to move that down to there, skipping that one. Um, and it's doing the action twice. So let's have a look at how it does that action, because it's not done that before. Um, matches the leftmost available resource on the Ketomas board. So it would be doing them in this order if there were any of those spaces available, but actually there's the generic one available. Um, so. Yeah. When selecting a trade finished goods field, it gains one of, of different type per action, starting with the leftmost resource. Do not adjust the priority ranking. So it gets uh, some wood, then it gets some stone. Because it's doing the action twice. And that's it. And we do not adjust it. Okay, right. That's done. That's moved down. Did I move it down? Yes, I moved it down. My go. Uh, right. Do I want to claim the board and get it done early and get it out of the way? Or do we want to do some more upgrading? I want to do some more upgrading. Am I bothered about it claiming a board? I don't think so because there's no scoring tiles. If there were scoring tiles, sometimes there are scoring tiles based on what's on your board at the end of the game. None of those have come out. So that boarding house is no good whatsoever. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to place a grey keeple here. And we're going to, ooh, no, we're going to put it here. Am I bothered about it claiming a board this early on? I don't think I am. Okay, so I'm going to put it there. 
Does it want to upgrade? Yes, it does want to upgrade. No boards have been claimed, so it's a six in six chance. It doesn't have a gray keeper though. It would have to place white, so it's down to five in six. Anything other than a one, it's a six. So it joins me, that goes on there. We both get to do three upgrades. It spends those three to upgrade one, two, three. And I spend. Now, what does an upgraded merchant do? Three points at the end of the game. The, under, the, the owner may undertake an additional boat action each time they use a boat tile. Oh, right. OK. A bit late for that now. So I'm going to upgrade with one wheat and two uh, logs. We're going to upgrade the cow shed. and the sheep shelter. Okay. Uh, and we've done the upgrades for Ketoma. Uh, now, which one did it join me on? I think it uses the uppermost one. Yeah, because it, it definitely wanted to join me twice. Once for there, once for there. So it goes with that one. I just noticed we could actually zoom in a bit. I know it's a bit late in the day, but we, we, we could have zoomed in a bit more. There we go. Right. Okay. So that's me done. Ketomas go. It's a two. So it's it's upgrading again, but it doesn't have anything to upgrade. So it does a home action instead. And I think that still moves down. So it gets some of that, some bricks and some clay. And that moves to there. Yeah, upgrade action. If it hasn't got sufficient resources, treat it as a home action, which I did. So yeah, I, I assume that the, the, the action tracker still moves down, even though it didn't do what it wanted to do. Um, if that's not right, Richard, please let me know. Eight country board tiles in the... Eight country board tiles in... Ah, yeah, we can flip them over. Thank you. Yeah, because that, that, that is the only side that can be done. Oh, no, the other side could be done. Did I only do two upgrade things? Oh, I did, yes. Uh, well, let's upgrade. Oh, no, I can't afford anything else. Did I only do two upgrades? I thought I did three, but now I can't think of the third one that I did. Okay, I'll, I'll spend a stone and upgrade the stable as well then. Yeah, I thought I spent a wheat to do an upgrade, but maybe I didn't. Oh, I should have done that. I'd be worth loads of points. Never mind. Okay, I paid for three. Oh, did I? Right, I paid for three and only did two. Thank you very much. Yeah, ideally, I would have upgraded the brickmaker or the carpenter because they're worth loads of points. I mean, I can still do that by getting wheat. He says, there's no wheat on the board. <laughs> so I can't do that. There's no wheat. Right. OK, so anyway. Uh, we're not going to upgrade the merchant. I, I, did, I, did I spend a wheat then? I was going to upgrade the merchant. Maybe I did spend a wheat. No, I'm going to upgrade the brickmaker instead instead of the stable. There you go. We got it right. I think we got it right. So I spent two resources in a wheat. Yeah, I was going to upgrade the merchant, but the upgraded merchant is the same number of points, um, but gives me a bonus every time I use a boat, which I'm not going to be doing now. But the brick maker, the upgraded brick maker is a straight five points. Uh, the autumn side of the fair tiles can't be achieved in winter. Oh, of course, we're in winter now, not in autumn. Thank you. Uh, for some reason, I thought we were still in autumn. But no, those fair tiles for me are no good at all. Because I don't have the requirements that's printed on them. Anyway, what was that? That was its go. 
and it did the upgrade but didn't do the upgrade and skipped and did a home action instead. Right, so my go, we have green, grey and white left. Can't get wheat. The wheat is all gone. Who'd have thought? It's winter and there's no way of getting wheat. See, it's thematic. Uh, I could go and get some cows and then sell the cows. No, no, I can't sell the cows anywhere. Um, can I get some boars? I could get some boars. But I don't think that's going to help. I'm a bit stuck now. Not sure what it is that I actually want to do. If I could get some more finished goods, oh, which I can, I can use my own buildings. The thing that we've not done yet. Yeah, we can absolutely do the thing that we haven't done yet. So let's do that. Let's place a meeple on one of my own buildings and convert this clay into two bricks. There you go, nice and easy, and nobody can join me if I do that. Okay, Ketoma's go. Ketoma rolls a three. So Ketoma is going to get gems. Is there a space available where it can get gems? Yes. So it does. Oh, hang on, hang on. Is it going to claim a board? Because that has a CBV of five. Sorry, one. It might claim this board. If I roll a one, it claims the board. Didn't roll a one. Right. So it's doing, doing the middle action. It's trying to get gems. Um, it wants gold in preference to anything else. But it doesn't have, so we've not done this. Select an available field matching the leftmost possible gem on the Ketoma's board gem priority spaces. Um, but it doesn't have black, so it will use white and it will go here. Okay, because that's what it wants. And that moves to the right. And it gets two gold unless uh, sorry uh yeah it gets two gold if i join it will get three as will i oh but then i can't do anything extra with the gold no that's just a bit of a waste if i get that so i don't think i'm going to join yeah because none of these boats want the gold so there you go it, just, it went there i didn't join and that marker moves down to there okay my go. Well, now we've done that, we can do some more upgrading. Yeah, so let's, let's do some more upgrading. So I'm going to go here. Does Ketoma want to upgrade anytime soon? Ketoma does not. Ketoma is done with upgrading. There is nothing left on here, so it doesn't join me. So it's just me, I do two upgrades. I spend the two finished goods, we upgrade the carpenter, and we upgrade the drainage, because it's an extra point, and then that is my go done. Ketoma, I rolled a six. Oh, uh, claiming board. This board has a value of two. This board has a value of two. So on a one or a two, it's claiming a board. I've rolled a five. Not claiming a board. So what action is it going to do? It's going to do this action, which is its home action. So that goes there and it gets one of those and one of those. My go, we are running out of time. I don't really know what else I can do to get points. Ah, I have a pigsty. I could get some pigs. Yeah. Yeah, we can totally get some pigs. JM, I can't, if I got any deer? Oh, there's deer there. Let's get some deer first. I'm not bothered about claiming a board. No, I'm not in any rush to claim a board. So if I get the deer and then use the ship, ah, no, I can't. Because the, that one would have to be that. Can I get, mm, don't. Chickens, chickens. I go here. I'm gonna get myself some chickens. Uh, does he want to join me? Animals are two spaces away. And he can colour match. So two spaces away. He will join me on a four to six. Uh, 
uh, that should have gone down one. It's going to join me on a four to six. It's a three, so he doesn't join me. Um, so I get two chickens. Look, look. I wanted three. Right, Kitomas go. Kitoma, uh, does it claim a board? Now, this is, this is value three. So on a one to three, he's going to claim the board. Claiming the board. Doesn't affect me at all. My go again. Um, so I'm going to place this boat here with white. Does it join me? Does it want to do a boat action? Yes, it does. Six in six. It's its board, no modifier. Does it have a matching keeple? Yes, it does. So it joins, um, which is that action. Okay, so I, we get to do it three times. So I will sell two chickens, but that's it. I'm just selling two. Oh, I'll take an emerald just for fun. So I get four points. Uh, and it will sell two emeralds for four points. And get a chicken. Okay. Uh, Ketomas go. We are nearing the end. Uh, Ketoma has rolled a one. It's not claiming a board now because it's already claimed a board. So it rolls a one, which means it's getting raw materials. Is there anywhere where it can get raw materials? It wants. Um, it wants wo uh, logs. But it doesn't have a brown keeple. So next it wants clay and it does have an orange keeple. So it will go there. Do I want to join? I can't join. So it basically gets two clay. And then that goes down to there. My go, I claim this board. Uh, and its go is going to be to roll the dice. It's a two. It's going to choose a boat action. It can't do a boat action because both of the boats are on the board. So what does it do? What does it do? Boat. Hmm. This hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> if Richard, you can let me know what happens when it wants to do a boat and it can't do a boat because it doesn't have the right. Well, bo both of the boats are full. So this must be in the rules somewhere. I'm just not sure where. Um, if no fields match the select dead action, I think it goes home. I think it goes home and it takes wood and logs. That's the only thing that I can think of that it does. Uh, and that's it. It's finished. So I get one final turn and I can do a lay down action somewhere where I am and I've actually got very very little to do like so little to do it's scary I could build but I've got very very little to build and it won't actually get me any points um I could trade some horses for points oh in fact my horses are only worth one point because I didn't upgrade the stable yes so I will do a lay down action there. I get two actions. I sell two horses. Didn't like them anyway. For four points. And that is the end of the game. Okay, so neither of us got any winter fares. So I think we now just go to end game scoring, which I've never got to. So this is the first time I've ever got here. And we're now going to read through it. So end of season, we don't really need to do the end of season stuff. Um, so shipping score track. Yes, farm tiles. Let's look at my tiles. I've got four sheep here on a sheep shelter is eight points. I have three cows on an upgraded cow shed is six points. I have four chickens on a cluck cluck upgraded chicken house for 12 points. And I have one horse in a stable for one point. Right. Village tiles. My drainage is worth two points. My carpenter is worth five. My building plot is worth three. My pavements is worth six. No, 10. How can it ever be worth 12? Does it count itself? Yes, so 12 points for the pavements, 
five points for the brick maker. Uh, right, gem merchant, you can use these a maximum of four times. So that is 24 points. One, two, three, four. That's a nice score. Shipyard is three. One, two, three. Good game. Uh, and the merchant is three. Yeah, I mean, if you can get in your 90s, I, I'm happy with that. I've also got my fares. 12 points. I've, I've broken the game. I've, I've gone off the top. I'm on 100. 105. I think that's right. Okay, so Kitoma scores points based on the difficulty. Right, are you ready? So, Kitoma scoring category. It depends if you're playing on Kizi, Curious, or Keywood. Right, now I didn't decide which difficulty level I'm playing on, but let's play on Kizi. Um, did I count drainage for itself? I didn't. Another two points. Thank you. So we're going to play on Kizi. So each point on the Kitoma's shipping score track is worth one. Right, so it's got, got 16, so that's 16 points. Each tile in the planned stack, zero. So it gets no points for those, but everything in the built stack, it gets one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It gets seven points for that. Uh, everything in the upgraded stack is worth two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's another 18. Uh, every second raw material and wheat in its supply rounded up is worth nothing. Okay, so forget that. Um, each finished good is worth one, so that's another three. Um, each animal is worth one. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, each gem is worth two. It's got two of them, so four. Uh, okay, so these are it. It does get points for these. Um, so each white keeple that it owns is three of them. Oh, that's six points. And each non-white keeple is a point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that's it. So I, I beat it on the Keezy setting. Okay. I think that's the scoring done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through the scoring for the curious, the curious setting and see if that would have done any different. Yeah, work out your score for each category. That's what I'm going to do. So if we were playing on curious, shipping track would have stayed the same. Fan stack would have been an extra three. Uh, the built stack would have been an extra three. This is an extra half point per tile. The upgraded stack would have been an extra one each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, these would have been worth two points. Wheat, nothing. These were worth the same. Uh, animals were worth an extra half point each. That's one, two, three, four, another four. Um, gems were worth three instead of two. So that's another two points. Um, White keepers were worth an extra one. And that's it. So we still, we beat it on Curious. On Curious, it scored 98. And I got 107. Okay, now if we were playing on the most difficult setting, we would not have won. Um, because it would have actually scored more points on the shipping track. Um, its tiles here would have been worth an extra three points. Its tiles here would have been worth an extra one point each. So it would have gained. Yeah, it would have gained probably about another 10 points, 15 points for the next setting up. So yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, difficulty settings affect final scoring. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, 107 is actually an extremely good score. I mean, may maybe I played better than I thought because Normally, I score in the 90s when I've played this game. It has been a while since I played it, and I certainly didn't feel that I played that well. Um, but yeah, no, this this was good. This this was challenging. As I, as I said at the start, and if you've been if you've been with us since the start, you would have seen that this is a quite a complex 
but very, very clever AI with a lot going on where it tries to, tries to emulate a human opponent. What would a human player do? Uh, and as you know, I put the, I put the flowchart up earlier on, which scared me when I first saw it. But once you understand this flowchart, it's actually quite simple is, does it have any key pools? Yes. Does it have its keeper? Yes. Do you still have your keeper? Yes. Check to see if it takes a board. If it, if it takes a board, it claims a board. If it doesn't claim a board, choose an action. Okay. Whereas if it still has its keeper, but you don't have yours, that means you've already claimed a board. So it's in no rush. So therefore it will never claim a board. If you claimed a board first, it will never claim a board until it's run out of stuff. And then it claims a board. And that's, that's basically how that works. Um, and then the back of the box has all of this on, which again is the probability that it will choose an action or follow you depending on uh, whether it has a key pool, whether it has to use a white one uh, and how far away it is and whether it's going to use the board that you've already claimed or the board that it hasn't already claimed. And all of that, it just makes sense because that's, that's what a human player would do. A human player would evaluate whether to follow you based on, oh, well, I do want to follow, but actually it's going to cost me my white. Oh, and actually, do I really want that right now? Yeah, I really want it, but it means following you. I'm going to give you a white key pull and it's going on your board. Maybe I won't. So yeah, that chart emulates that human decision about, about what you would do. Uh, the action tracker is quite clever. The most difficult part of the action tracker is that you have to remember to move the pieces down, which is, which is just me. Um, but these are the actions that it wants to do and the order in which it will do them. And that is, that is really needed because otherwise what will happen is the, the ketoma might just be doing the same actions repeatedly. Whereas with these, this means it will do one action and then it's more likely to do another action. And this, th this process of these and marking the temporary ones when it follows you means that it will probably cycle through the actions and do them at the best point for it. So yeah, that, that's quite clever as well. Um, there we go. We are all done. It's 5.30. Thank you very much for joining me. This was two and a half hours. But as I say, this would be a 90 minute game. If I, if I decided to play this right again now, it would be 90 minutes. Um, I did have a practice this afternoon, but that wasn't enough. Uh, but after this second game, yeah, definitely feel that this would be a, a 90 minute game if you played it solo. But we are all done. Um, if you are interested in backing the game, there is a limited print run. Um, let me just have a look at the Kickstarter right now and just see where we are with it. Go to the front page. So the campaign, although it has 15 days to run, there are 843 backers. Uh, and if what I'm reading is correct, that there's going to be a limited, they're, they're printing a thousand copies, is it Richard? I think you said a thousand copies. Um, so yeah, so it, it's, an, it's an unusual Kickstarter uh, in that, you know, it isn't just get this many backers and that's how many will, will print. It is a limited print run. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in backing the game, there's 15 days left as of today, uh, but definitely go and check out the, uh, definitely go and check out the Kickstarter campaign. And uh, yeah, we are all done. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, thank you to Richard for being there in the chat. Uh, shame David couldn't join us, but I hope you've had a safe drive across, across the Netherlands to celebrate King's Day tomorrow. Um, and yeah, thank you very much to all of my patron supporters that make what I do on the channel possible. If you are interested in supporting me and you currently don't support me on Patreon, I have a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Yeah, which basically helps keep the lights on and uh, keeps me going. So yeah, thanks very much for joining me. I will speak to you all later on. Bye-bye. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.